All right, hear me out. You might not know me and you might have questions about why this funny bird is on your screen, but give me some time to explain myself. I'm Dr. Skipper and this is an iceberg. The point of an iceberg is to get minimal information while also being entertained by my audio. Yes, I'm not a god with editing whizzes, but hopefully this is digestible. But the best way to watch this video is by doing task. If you have anything you don't want to do right now, might be the time to do it. If you got to clean your room, go out for a walk, do your homework, play a game, draw, you should listen to this in the background. The point is you should go do some minimal tasks while also watching this video. Is it pretentious? for me to tell you to go to sleep to my crisp audio? Absolutely, but do it anyway. Here's some boring hoopla before we start the video too. Blah, 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 people not subscribed, not subscribed, okay. I'm not gonna lie, a subscription would be helpful if you do enjoy this video, but I'd rather you wait till the end and then make your choice. But for those who like to cut lines, a subscription right now would be also kind of helpful. And leave a like on the video if you like horror games such as Undertale and FNAF, it'll help me as well. And by the way, I got a friend on this video named Bryzen, so you should go check out his channel before this starts as well. Also, I got a couple other icebergs if you wanna see those. One on Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, the commentary community, Kanye West. So after you finish this video and realize you're an insomniac or a procrastinator, you should go watch those too. Now with that, let's get into the first layer. Undertale. Undertale is a 2D role-playing video game created by indie developer Toby Fox. The player controls a child who has fallen into the underground, a large secluded region under the surface of the earth, separated by a magic barrier. The player meets various monsters during the journey back to the surface. Some monsters might engage the player in a fight. The combat system involves the player navigating through many bullet hell attacks by the opponent. The player can opt to pacify or subdue monsters in order to spare them instead of killing them. These choices affect the game, with the dialogue, characters, and story changing based on outcomes. Outside of some artwork, Fox developed the entirety of the game by himself including the script and music. The game took inspiration from several sources, including the brandish Mario and Luigi and Mother role-playing series, and weirdly even British comedy show Mr. Bean. Originally, Undertale was meant to be two hours in length and was set to be released in mid-2014. However, development was delayed over the next three years. The game was released for Microsoft Windows in September 2015. It was also ported to Linux in July 2016, and PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation Vita in August 2017. Then the Nintendo Switch in September 2018. Then the Xbox One and Xbox Series X slash s in march 2021 the game was praised for its story material its combat system musical score originality story dialogue and characters and the game has sold over 1 million copies and was nominated for multiple accolades and awards it was also listed as game of the year five nights at freddy's five nights at freddy's is an american media franchise created by scott Cawthon, which began with the first game in 2014 then quickly became a pop culture phenomenon the success of the video game led to the publication of several books including a novel trilogy a guidebook an activity book and an anthology series, and a film adaptation is also planned. Also, a ton of merchandise has also been produced for the game. And there's even a horror attraction based on the series that was in Adventure Dome for Halloween 2016. And for those who don't know what Adventure Dome is, it's like a really, really shitty, it's a theme park in Vegas represent. If you're from Vegas, let me know down in the comments. The series appeared to be in the Genius Book of Records Gamer Edition, setting a record for the largest number of sequels released in a year. The main series consists of nine games. In the first three games, the player controls a nighttime security guard who mostly utilizes security cameras and other tools to survive against the animatronic characters, which basically want to pretty much kill you after hours. The fourth game takes place in the house of a child who wants to defend against nightmarish visions of animatronics. The fifth game is set in the maintenance facility owned by sister company of the Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, where the player is a technician who must complete five different tasks each night. And then in the sixth game, the player assumes the role of a new owner of the pizzeria. The seventh game allows the player to alter the difficulty settings against 50 antagonists from the previous games. And the eighth game features virtual reality gameplay. The ninth game features an augmented reality. And the tenth game will feature a modernized shopping mall. Ken Your Pet. I tried to look more into Ken Your Pet and all I could do is find old YouTube videos. Basically, it looked like it was like a pet simulator. Like you could take care of this pet and train it to do things. And then it has a really dark twisted ending where it gets turned into chicken. Apparently you put it on a bicycle, but the bicycle ends up turning into a meat grinder. It was like one of those really old ass shot games. Like, do you remember that one thing where you like move the dot through the maze and it gets the creepy flash thingy at the end? Yeah, it's one of those things. I mean, it's interesting. It's just a complete shock value thingy. Not that much to it. I'll move on, but I guess I'll show the clip here. Slender. The Eight Pages. Formerly called Slender is a free-to-play indie game which released in June 2012 as a beta for Microsoft Windows, and it was made by Parsec Productions, using the Unity engine. Developed by Mark J. Hawley, the game is based on the folklore meme known as Slenderman, who is depicted as a tall humanoid creature wearing a black suit and white tie, with no facial features. The character is known for his abduction of multiple children in dark, mysterious settings, such as deep forest and abandoned buildings. The game became a pop culture phenomenon, destroying YouTube and taking over it. So Slender, the 
Rivals, a remake of the first game, and the game was released on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 in September 2014. It was released for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One in March 2015, and then the Switch port was released in June 2019. I guess I should reiterate, it's not a fully remake, but it's more of a remaster, kind of. Like its predecessor, the game is pretty much the same type of thing. Baldi's Basics Within Baldi's Basics, the goal of the game is to collect seven notebooks, then escape the school. Baldi's Basics is pretty much based off of like old 90 Flash games about math and shit, but looking more into it, it turns into be like a kind of horror game. The premise and aesthetic look pretty cool. Uh, I don't really know too much about the game other than that, but it's interesting. Bendy and the Ink Machine Bendy and the Ink Machine is an episodic first-person survival horror video game developed and published by Kindly Beast. Under the name of the game's in-universe animation studio, Joey Drew Studios, Inc. It was initially released to Game Jolt on February 10th, 2017, as the first five chapters with a full release on October 27th, 2018. The game was also released for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch on November 20th, 2018, being published by Rooster Teeth Games, you know, the same guys who made Red vs. Blue, and for iOS and Android on December 21st, 2018. Inspired by the Bioshock game series, the game is set in a fictional studio of Joey Drew Studios, where the player controls Henry Stein, a retired animator which receives a letter from his old workmate, Joey Drew, inviting him back to his old workplace, where he discovers a series of strange paranormal activities caused by Ink Machine. In the game, players navigate through a first-person perspective and they need to complete certain tasks to proceed, which consists of collecting certain objects to solve puzzles or to combat enemies by using certain weapons. They could also find audio logs recorded by the studio's employees in order to understand the game's history. Bending the Ink Machine was well received upon its initial release, with praise centering on its vintage aesthetic and story. Also, its puzzles and combat mechanics were severely criticized. In the months following its release, it quickly gained a massive following from exposure on platforms like YouTube and Twitch, and eventually was approved by Steam Greenlight in mid-2017. Merchandise was made as well as a mobile spin-off, which was later introduced to further promote the game. Mike Mood, the game's programmer and co-creator, described the game as a accidental success. A next game titled Bendy and the Dark Revival is currently in development and scheduled to be released this year, 2021. Resident Evil 4 Resident Evil 4 is a survival horror third-person and shooter video game developed by Capcom Productions, the sixth major installment in the Resident Evil series. It was originally released for the GameCube in 2005. Players control U.S. government special agent Leon S. Kennedy, who is sent on a mission to rescue the U.S. president's daughter, Ashley Graham, who's been kidnapped by a cult in a rural part of Europe. Leon fights hordes of villagers infected by a mind-controlling parasite and reunites with Ada Wong. Development began for the PlayStation 2 in 1999. Resident Evil 4 was announced as a GameCube exclusive, a part of the Capcom 5, but was ported to numerous formats, becoming a cross-platform hit selling over 10 million copies across all platforms. It garnered universal acclaim for its narrative, gameplay, graphics, voice acting, and characters, and is often named one of the best video games of all time, winning multiple Game of the Year awards in 2005, and influenced the evolution of survival horror and third-person genres, popularizing the over-the-shoulder third-person view. Its sequel, Resident Evil 5, was released in 2009. Amnesia Amnesia The Dark Descent is a survival horror adventure video game by Frictional Games, which released in 2010 for Microsoft Windows, and then in 2016 for the PlayStation 4, and then in 2018 for the Xbox One. The game features a protagonist named Daniel exploring a dark and foreboding castle named Brennenberg, while trying to maintain his sanity by avoiding monsters and terrifying obstructions. The game was critically well received, earning two awards from Independent Game Festival and numerous positive reviews. Originally released independently, via online distribution, the game has since been publicly retailed by 1C Company in Russia and Eastern Europe, as well as THQ in North America. A collection of five short stories set in the world of Amnesia, written by Michael Hedberg, has been illustrated in the game's concept, with the newest one, Amnesia Rebirth, which was released on October 20th, 2020. Among the Sleep Among the Sleep is a first-person survival horror action video game developed by Norwegian developer Krillbyte for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. It released on May 29th, 2014 in North America for the PC. Then the PlayStation 4 version was released on the 10th of December, 2015, whilst the Xbox One version was released on the 3rd of June, 2016. A definitive remaster titled Among the Sleep Enhanced Edition was released for PC on November 2nd, 2017, and then later released for the PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch on May 29th, 2019. Phasmophobia. So Phasmophobia has been a recent game, and it's incredibly fun. It's a game where you play as these ghost hunters where you could go around multiple various locations and just do tasks to find out which ghost is like haunting you. It's a fun game that blew up in popularity last year in October around Halloween. You could use clues to find out what ghost is haunting you, you could have equipment, there's a money system, it's just, it's a great game. Also I have a funny clip where I was talking a Jamaican accent so I'll play that for you now, then we'll move on to the next game. Who died man? Not me. Oh no, Cinnamon, oh no. <laughs> I never got mine. Oh, 
yes, man. <laughs> Come on, man. You're not dead. Little Nightmares is a puzzle platformer horror adventure game set in a mysterious world. Little Nightmares follows the journey of six and hungry little girls who must escape the Maw, an iron vessel inhabited by monstrous, twisted beings. The game received positive reviews upon release and critics praising its atmosphere, graphics, and sound, while criticizing its checkpoint system and short length. A prequel, Little Nightmares 2, was released in February 2021. Well, that's it for the first layer. I'll be moving on to the second layer. If there's anything you want to say or criticize or even give second thoughts on, let me know in the comments below before we get to the second layer. All right, I'll see you there. Darkwood. Darkwood is a top-down survival horror video game developed by Acid Wizard Studio. The game was first released through Steam Early Access on July 24th, 2014, with an eventual full game release on August 18th, 2017 for Microsoft Windows, Mac, and Steam. The game takes place in a mysterious dark forest somewhere in Poland from the territory of the Soviet bloc, where the main characters have been trapped for an unknown amount of time. On March 20th, 2019, a Nintendo Switch version was announced during the Nintendo Direct panel, and was released on May 16th, 2019. The game was also ported and released for PlayStation 4 on May 14th, 2019, and for Xbox One on May 16th, under the publisher Crunch koalas. Cry of Fear. Cry of Fear is a survival horror game developed by an independent Swedish studio. It was released as a standalone product the following year. I'm going to give a basic rundown of what Cry of Fear is, since this is an iceberg, but if you want a really good in-depth video, I recommend you watch the Pyrocynical one. It's two hours long, and it's amazing. But Cry of Fear began development in 2008. The mod was delayed several times due to the limitations before being released in 2012. During the four years of development on Cry of Fear, many ideas were scrapped, while others were improved. For example, the phone's flashlight was initially made to illuminate the area around the player. This was later changed to illuminate the area in front of the player. The inventory system was also reduced from 12 slots to 6 slots. At its beginning, Cry of Fear used the standard Half-Life renderer which was later replaced by the one in Paranoia, another popular Half-Life mod. Changing the render allowed the developers to bypass some older limits and add new engine effects, such as texture bump mapping, specular reflection, and 3D skyboxes. Dead Space Dead Space is a 2008 survival horror video game developed by EA Redwood Shores and published by Electronic Arts for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Microsoft Windows. The debut entry in the Dead Space series was released in North America, Europe, and Australia. The game is set on a mining spaceship overran by deadly monsters called Necromorphs, which were released during the discovery of an artifact called the Marker. The player controls engineer Isaac Clark as he navigates the spaceship and finds the Necromorphs, while struggling with growing psychosis. Gameplay has Isaac exploring different areas through chapter-based narratives. You're constantly solving environmental puzzles and finding ammunition and equipment to survive. Dead Space was pitched in early 2006 with an early prototype running on the Xbox. Creator Glenn Schofield wanted to make the most frightening horror game he could imagine, drawing inspiration from the video game Resident Evil 4 and films like Event Horizon. The team pushed for innovation and realism in their design ranging from the procedural enemy placements to removing HUD elements. The sound design was also a particular focus during production, with the score by Jason Graves designed to evoke tension and unease. The game was announced in 2007. Though the game made weak sales along the other 2008 titles, the game eventually sold 1 million copies worldwide. It won and was also nominated for multiple industry awards, and has been ranked by journalists as one of the greatest video games ever made. It spawned two direct sequels, Dead Space 2 and Dead Space 3, and has multiple spin-off titles, such as a comic prequel and an animated film. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard Resident Evil Biohazard is a 2017 survival horror game developed and published by Capcom, which is the ninth major installment in the Resident Evil series. Resident Evil 7 diverges from the more action-packed oriented Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 6, returning to the franchise's survival horror roots, emphasizing exploration. The player controls Ethan Winters as he searches for his wife in a plantation occupied by an infected family, solving puzzles and fighting enemies. Resident Evil 7 is also the first full-length game to use Capcom's new engine. A year prior to its announcement at E3 2016, it presented a virtual reality demo called Kitchen. The team took inspiration from the Sam Raimi film, The Evil Dead. Resident Evil 7 was released in January 2017 for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and in May 2018 for the Nintendo Switch in Japan. It also supports the PlayStation VR headset. Also, its sequel, Resident Evil Village, is scheduled for 2021. Karamari Hospital Karamari Hospital is the first DLC for Spooky Jump Scare Mansion. The DLC was first revealed on November 8th, 2015, and was originally slated for the release on December 29th, 2015. But on December 30th, 2015, it was announced on Twitter that the DLC was waiting for approval by Steam servers. A few hours after that announcement, the DLC was released publicly on Steam. According to the update provided by Steam, players will enjoy an additional 45 minutes to one hour of new gameplay, featuring two new monsters and a new explorable area. Apparently, the DLC is separate from the main game, using its own executable file, and the player starts in room 995. Also, none of the previous specimens will be present. Fatal Frame 
Fatal Frame, titled Zero in Japan and Project Zero in Europe, is a Japanese survival horror video game series, published and developed by Koi Tecmo, debuting in 2001 with the first entry in the series for the PlayStation 2. The series is set in 1980s Japan, with each entry focusing on the location beset by hostile supernatural events. In each scenario, the characters involved in the present investigation use Camera Obscura. The series draws on staple elements of Japanese horror and is noted for its use of frequent female protagonists. After being introduced to the PlayStation 2 hardware, and after the success of the Silent Hill series, the pair decided decided to develop a horror series, which was inspired by Japanese horror films. Their main goal was to make the most frightening game experience possible. Later installments have refined gameplay mechanics while also doing more complex narrative elements. The series received critical acclaim, being ranked alongside other horror games such as Resident Evil and Silent Hill. Soma Soma is a survival horror video game developed and published by Frictional Games. The game was released on the 22nd of September 2015 for Microsoft Windows, Linux, PlayStation 4, and on December 1st, 2017 on the Xbox One. Soma takes place on an underwater remote research facility that contains machinery which are exhibiting human characteristics, such as consciousness. Simon Jarrett, a fish out of water protagonist, finds himself under mysterious circumstances and embarks on a journey within its history, while trying to also make sense of his predicament and potential future. Soma's gameplay builds on the conventions established established by previous horror title games, including an emphasis on stealthy evasion threats. It also has insane immersion. However, in break with this tradition, it also de-empathizes aspects such as inventory management in favor of a tighter focus on narrative. Soma has received positive reviews from critics. It's also been applauded on its story, voice acting, and although its enemy design and encounters have received some criticism, it's still a loved game. Outlast Outlast is a first-person survival horror video game which was developed and published by Red Barrels. The game revolves around a freelance investigative journalist, Miles Upshur, who decides to investigate a remote psychiatric hospital named Mount Massive Asylum, located deep in the mountains of Lake County, Colorado. The downloadable content Outlast Whistleblower centers on Wayland Park. Outlast was released for Microsoft Windows on September 4, 2013, PlayStation 4 on February 4, 2014, and Xbox One on January 19, 2014. The game is a critical acclaim and destroyed YouTube for when it released. Bioshock is a 2007 first-person shooter game developed by 2K Boston, later Irrational Games, and 2K Australia, and published by 2K Games. In the first game in the Bioshock series, the game's concept was well developed by Irrational's creative lead, Ken Levine, and incorporates ideas by 20th century dystopian and utopian thinkers such as Ayn Rand, George Orwell, and Aldous Huxley, as well as historical figures such as John D. Rockefeller and Walt Disney. The game is considered a spiritual successor to the System Shock series, on which many of Irrational's team, including Levine, I had worked on previously. Bioshock is set in the 1960. The player guides the protagonist, Jack, after his airplane crashes into the ocean, which leads him to the underwater city of Rapture. Built by the business magnate, Andrew Ryan. The city was intended to be an isolated utopia, but the discovery of Adam, a genetic material which could be used to grant superhuman powers, initiated the city's turbulent decline. Jack tries to find a way to escape, fighting through hordes of Adam-obsessed enemies and the iconic deadly Big Daddies, while engaging with a few sane humans that remain and eventually learn about the Rapture's past. The player as Jack can defeat foes in several ways by using several weapons. It was released for Microsoft Windows and Xbox 360 platforms in August 2007. PlayStation 3 port by Irrational 2K Martin 2K Australia and Digital Extremes was released in October 2008. Also, a scaled-down mobile version of the game was developed by IG Fun, which contained the first few levels of the game. Bioshock received critical acclaim and was particularly praised by critics for its storyline. It had immersive environments, a unique setting, and was considered to be one of the greatest video games of all time once again. It received multiple Game of the Year awards from different media outlets, including BAFTA, Game Informer, Spike TV, and X-Play. Since then, there's been a couple of sequels released, such as Bioshock 2, Bioshock Infinite, and in September 2016, it was a part of the Bioshock collection. It also got a remastered release in 2017. Alien Isolation is a 2014 survival horror video game developed by Creative Assembly and published by Sega originally for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. Based on the Alien science fiction horror film series, the game is set 15 years after the events of the original 1979 film Alien and follows an engineer, Amanda to Ripley daughter of alien protagonist Ellen Ripley, as she investigates the disappearance of her mother. Unlike previous game adaptations of the Alien franchise, Alien Isolation places the emphasis on stealth and survival horror gameplay, requiring the player to avoid and outsmart a single alien creature with the tools such as motion trackers and flamethrowers. It was designed to resemble the original film rather than its more action-packed oriented 1986 sequel, Aliens, and features a similar lo-fi 1970s vision of what the future would look like. The game runs on an engine built from scratch to accommodate technical aspects such as atmosphere 
atmospheric and lighting effects. Also, the alien's behavior. Creative Assembly intended to make Alien Isolation a third person game, but used first person to create more of an intense experience. Alien Isolation received genuinely positive reviews and sold over 2 million copies by May 2015, and it was praised by critics. Dark Souls. Oh, Christ, we're talking about Dark Souls. So, Dark Souls is a 2011 action role playing game developed by From Software. It's a spiritual successor from From Software's Demon Souls, and the game is a second installment in the Soul series. Dark Souls takes place in the fictional kingdom of Lordran. Dark Souls has been cited as one of the best video games of all time. Critics praise the depth of its combat and intricate level design, also its use of flavor text. However, it's a 50-50 on the game's difficulty, with some criticizing it for being too unforgiving and some liking the challenge. There's not much to say more about Dark Souls, but I'm gonna assume it's on this iceberg due to the lore of it. Dark Souls doesn't necessarily hold your hand through its narrative. There's technically a lore that you can look into, and there's tons of games and reviews that cover that, so I recommend you look into that. Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight was released for Microsoft Windows in June 2016, and released for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One in June 2017, and released for the Nintendo Switch on September 24, 2019. Until Dawn. Until Dawn is a 2015 interactive drama horror video game developed by Supermassive Games and published by Sony Computer Entertainment for the PlayStation 4. The game was originally planned as a first person game for PlayStation 3's motion controller, PlayStation Move. The motion controls were dropped when it became a PlayStation 4 game. The story was written by Larry Fessenden and Graham Resnick, who sought to create a video game equivalent to a slasher film. The development team took inspiration from various sources. These include the movies such as Evil Dead 2 and Poltergeist, and video games such as Heavy Rain, Resident Evil and Silent Hill. Jason Graves composed the soundtrack as well. The game includes several noted actors, including Rami Malek, Jordan Fisher, Nicole Boom, and etc., who provided motion capture and voice acting. Until Dawn was announced at GamesCon 2012 and released in August 2015. Although the title received little marketing effort from Sony, its sales still surpassed expectations. The game received generally positive reviews. Critics praised the branching nature of the story, butterfly effect system, world building, characters, and use of quick time events. It was nominated for multiple Game of the Year awards and got tons of accolades. The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. So when it comes to the dark twisted stuff of Majora's Mask, this also has to do with creepypastas. For example, Ben Drowned is one of the most popular creepypastas surrounding Majora's Mask, and that's probably why it's on this iceberg. There's multiple videos discussing about Ben Drowned, so I let you go find those for yourself. But I think that's 100% why this is on this iceberg. Actual Majora's Mask is just a Legend of Zelda video game that everybody knows about. So yeah, go look more into that. Dark Deception. The pre-alpha demo of the game was released in March of 2014, and was developed in Unity. The demo only had one level. Glowstick Entertainment wanted to make Dark Deception a complete horror game, so a Kickstarter page for the game was opened. The alpha demo of the game was released on January 16th, 2015 and contained two levels. A trailer was posted on the Kickstarter page, which said the complete game was scheduled to finish around April 2015. However, two major problems occurred, which caused the game to not be completed. The first problem was the fact that the head of the company, Mark Henderson, had an argument with one of the other members, Vince Livings, resulting in them splitting up. The second reason was that there was just not enough money to finish the game. In late 2017, the game was rebuilt in Unreal Engine 4, Bloodborne. Bloodborne is an action role-playing game developed by From Software and published by Sony Computer Entertainment, which was released for the PlayStation 4 in March 2015. Bloodborne follows the player's character Hunter through a decrypted Gothic Victorian era, whose inhabitants are afflicted by the Bloodborne disease. Attempting to find the source of the plague, the player's character unravels the city's mysteries while fighting beasts and cosmic beings. The game is played from a third-person perspective. Players control a custom protagonists in the gameplay's focus on strategic weapon-based combat and exploration. Players battle varied enemies while using items such as swords and firearms, exploring different locations, interacting with non-player characters, and unraveling the city's mysteries. Bloodborne began development in 2012 under the working title of Project Beast bearing many similarities to the Soul series. I mean, it is by the same developer, after all. Bloodborne was inspired by the literary works of Arthur H.P. Lovecraft and Bram Stoker, as well as the architectural design of real-world locations in places such as Romania and the Czech Republic. Bloodborne received critical acclaim, with the praise being directed at its gameplay. But just like Dark Souls, some of the criticism had to do with the game's difficulty. Layers of Fear Layers of Fear is a psychological horror video game developed by Blutter Team, and it was released on Linux, Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One worldwide in February. 2016. In Layers of Fear, the player controls a psychologically disturbed painter who's trying to complete his magnum opus as he navigates a Victorian mansion revealing secrets about his past. The gameplay presented is in the first person perspective, and it's story driven and resolves around puzzle solving and exploration. A definitive port for the Nintendo Switch, entitled Layers of Fear Legacy, was released on the 21st of February 2018. Its sequel was released on May 29th, 2019. Subnautica. Subnautica is an open world survival action adventure video game developed and published by Unknown Worlds Entertainment. In it, players are free to explore the ocean on an alien planet, known as Planet 4546B 
After their spaceship, the Aurora crashes on the planet's surface. The player must collect resources and face creatures to survive. Subnautica was released in early access for Microsoft Windows in December 2014. It was released out of early access in January 2018 for Microsoft Windows and Xbox One, and on the PlayStation 4 in December 2018. By January 2020, Subnautica has sold more than 5 million copies, and a Nintendo Switch release has been confirmed for May 2021. A sequel called Subnautica Below Zero is currently in development. It was released for early access on January 30th, 2019. Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain is a 2010 interactive drama and action adventure game developed by Quantic Dream and published by Sony Computer Entertainment. The game features four protagonists involved with the mystery of the Origami Killer, a serial murderer who uses extended periods of rainfall to drown his victims. The player interacts with the game by performing actions highlighted on screen related to the motions of the controller, and in some cases performing a series of quick time events. The player's decisions and actions during the game affect the narrative. Game developer David Cage wrote the 2000 page script, as well as acted as director for the four years of the development. He also traveled to Philadelphia to research the setting, and intended to improve on which was flawed in the 2005 game, Fahrenheit. Composer Norman Corbell wrote the score, which was recorded at Abbey Road Studios. You know, the same place where Iridescence was recorded at. Once again, if you're a Brockhampton fan, tell me. The game was released for PlayStation 3 in February 2010, and on PlayStation 4 in 2016. Heavy Rain was a critical and commercial success, winning three BAFTA awards and selling over 5 million copies. The game received praise for its emotional impact, visuals, writing, controls, voice acting, and music. Silent Hill. Ooh, now this is a popular one. Silent Hill is a Japanese horror media franchise set around the series survival horror video games. It was developed and published by Konami. The first four video games in the series, Silent Hill, Silent Hill 2, Silent Hill 3, and Silent Hill 4 The Room, were developed by an internal group called Team Silent. The later six games, Origin, Homecoming, Shattered Memories, Downpour, Book Entertainment Tokyo. The Silent Hill franchise has expanded to include various print pieces, two feature films, and a spin-off video game series. As of 2013, the game series has sold over 8.4 million copies worldwide. Well that's it for Layer 2. This was a longer one compared to the first one. But for Layer 3, I'm going to be handing this off to my friend Bryson. He's a great channel, he's getting close to a thousand subs, so please check him out. Alright though, I'll see you at the fourth layer. Hi, I'm Bryson, and before I start layer 3 of this horror game iceberg, I just want to say a massive thank you to Rocket for allowing Skipper to let me on the video today. And if you do end up enjoying this video and my part, be sure to drop a fat like on the video, sub to the main man himself so we can pay Rocket a fair wage, and while you're at it, come and sub to me too. Anyways, enough waffling, let's get into layer 3 of this iceberg. <laughs> After two years of development, in 2017, a seemingly innocent visual novel developed by Team Savato puts you in the perspective of a high schooler who's recently joined the school's literature club to try and get one of the four girls in the club. What starts off as a simple dating simulator very quickly turns into a dark, plot-driven, fourth-wall-breaking horror game, constantly putting you, the player, into dilemmas and made to feel guilt with every passing decision made, which caught many a YouTube Let's Player by surprise. Due to this being a large iceberg video, I'm not going to cover every plot point in ending, and with Doki Doki Literature Club being such a popular game, I'm sure many of you watching this video have played or watched a playthrough regardless, so let's move on. Hey, good morning Kanye. In mid-2015, Frambo is released by the game development studio Kill Monday Games, placing you into the shoes of a young girl named Frambo. After witnessing the graphic dismemberment of your parents by an unknown assailant, our protagonist escapes into the forest. Captured and put into a mental hospital, you resourcefully use drugs to escape, travelling through various hellscapes on a mission to find your cat and uncover the mystery of who game ended your parents. Frambo's horror comes from the innate psychological fear of mental illness, as well as the healthy amount of gore. Many are criticised the game for having an unfulfilling ending, and in response, a sequel has been confirmed. However, the release date and development details have yet to be revealed. The power of Christ compels you! In 2011, the indie game The Binding of Isaac was published to extreme popularity. While better described as a roguelike RPG shooter, it features several unsettling themes, mainly stemming from the game's story based on the biblical tale of the same name. In this game, you, Isaac, are forced from your home due to your mother, a religious zealot, who is commanded by a higher being to end your life. Escaping into an unfamiliar space inhabited by beings which wouldn't look out of place in the nightmares of children. Children. While the game may seem scary when told from the perspective of the main character, the player's top-down view relieves some of this stress. The game has been out for a decade now, so there's not much I'll go into detail about. If you want to check out more of the game, check out Northern Lion. He's got a 5,000 episode playlist of this game and its various offshoots. I've fallen and I can't get up! 
In 2006, a small indie video game company was created by the name Play Dead, with one idea in mind, Limbo. The nameless boy or Limboilo boy is a dark silhouette of a small boy travelling through the edge of hell. The surprisingly difficult puzzles paired with a dark, emotionless background makes you feel as though there could be another murderous being behind every corner. Travelling through the game makes you increasingly uneasy as more and more morbid scenarios occur, including a hanging boy, a giant spider ready to string a body against its limbs, and getting attacked by unknown assailants, then using their bodies to continue. Six years after Limbo's original release, Playdead released another game called Inside. Inside is very similar to Limbo, with bleak backgrounds and increasingly difficult puzzles. Inside has a slightly different tone though, where you are trying to avoid brainwashed, unnamed zombies. After escaping from dogs and people in black, the protagonist is revealed to be controlled by a giant blob who used him to leave. Let me in. Let me in. Presentable Liberty is a game that was made in 2014 by Robert Brock. You're mainly based inside of a jail cell where you receive letters from multiple recipients. The only thing you have to mess around with while waiting for said letters is a very hard game system. You get these game systems from Mr. Smiley, a seemingly happy man who was hired by Mr. Money. As the time goes on, you realise that things seem off when Mr. Smiley starts to break down. He is forced to send letters and pretend to be happy for his family or else. You soon realise that Dr. Money, the man who sent you your first letter, created a disease he cannot control. Eventually you make a new friend, Charlotte. Charlotte owns a shop next to the jail you live in and is incredibly worried about the disease. Eventually your best friend, who has been sending you letters since the beginning, tries to break you out. He dies trying but you escape. Just before this happens, Charlotte says she will kill herself if you do not get out soon, because there is nobody else left out there. You are too late. Boom! Ooh. Bam! Oh. Bop! Bada bop boom! Pow. Exoptable Money was also made by Robert Brock in 2014. You are now playing as yet another unnamed protagonist. Exoptable Money is incredibly similar to games like Cookie Clicker because you get money and buy upgrades to get more of such. After buying a specific amount of upgrades, you get letters from Madame Sinclair, who is very good at luring cats. She notices that you are gaining income and says you should buy a kitten. Once you do so, you can send it out for money. After some time, the kitten will come back with larger amounts of money. Madame starts to send more daft messages by the minute until she says that she has found your kitten. You most likely thought it was a coincidence since you just sent out your kitten, but that was not the case. She soon sends you the head of your kitten with its eyes gouged out. Learning that the money machine doesn't copy only jewels and money, but fur too, gives the protagonist an idea. You get a letter from Dr. Money who says he needs money for the East-West conflict. You cannot send him the money because there is no option to. He then sends you another letter with a virus because you didn't send him the money. Dr. Money puts the antidote on the store, but it's just your score plus one. The game won't and cannot progress without you buying it, and once you do, Madame Sinclair confirms it is real because she has it. It isn't a full antidote and you need to keep buying it at a high cost. It truly is a shame though, because in the end it causes organ failure. Dr. Money has to regretfully lower the cost to your points, by a thousand less. Dr. Money yet again contacts you and wants to duplicate organs through your money machine. The organs are obviously imperfect, so everybody starts dying. Dr. Money says you should max out your machine, after which Madame Sinclair Claire dies. You can finally buy a can opener for a can of beans, and as you open the godly can, your organs fail and you die. I just want to add a little note at the end of this, as the last two games were made by Robert Brock. He did sadly pass in 2018, so may he rest in peace. <laughs> In 2009, Naughty Dog, fresh off of Uncharted 2, split into two teams, one to work on Uncharted 3 and the other to work on their brand new IP, The Last of Us. The main focus was to develop the deep relationship between Joel and Ellie as they establish a father-daughter relationship and a bond of protection. The game takes place in a post-apocalyptic world in which an outbreak of a mutant fungus is turning people into cannibals and zombie-like. After being announced in 2011, hype began to build and received an overwhelming amount of support and release in 2013 selling 1.3 million units in its first week and 17 million by 2018. It was praised for its narrative, gameplay and design, as well as sound design and basically everything imaginable, which of course led to many Game of the Year awards and accolades, including going down in history as possibly one of the greatest games ever made. And for that reason, I won't be going into detail. However, after such a success with The Last of Us, a sequel had to follow. And 11 years after the initial development of the first game and 7 years after release, 
came that so awaited sequel. Hype had been building for the sequel for a minimum of six years, and after such an incredible game The Last of Us 1 was, brought expectations. And one thing about trying to follow up a top 3 game of all time is everyone expects a top 2 game of all time, and with every passing year came more and more expectations. Unfortunately the hype came crashing down on June 19th 2020. Like I said, when you leave an audience so many years to experience one of the greatest games of all time, they start to expect more, and that just isn't always possible. We see it so often nowadays. No Man's Sky, Cyberpunk, Fallout 76, they all fell into this hole. Hype is incredible for sales, but terrible for reviews, as everyone expects a perfect game, and there is no such thing as perfect. However, despite not being as well received as the first, The Last of Us 2 went on to become the most sold game on the PS4 ever, holds the record for most Game of the Year awards, sold 4 million copies in the first weekend alone, and has been praised for its more adult story, gameplay, graphics, and representation amongst the LGBTQ plus community. The game is set 6 years after the first, making Ellie now 19, and avenging Joel's death. It explores many narratives that the first game couldn't take due to Ellie being a child at the time, and all in all is a good game that was overshadowed by expectations. Same as the first game, it was a huge release, and so recent, I'm sure every single person watching this video has played or seen the game, so I'll leave it there. Watch your profanity. This War of Mine was published in late 2014 by 11-Bit Studios. Placed into the middle of a war in an Eastern European city, you control a group of survivors as you try to maintain your base of operations and stave off death for as long as possible. This game isn't horrifying because of its jump scares or enemies, but due to the constant stress it puts on the player. You must plan delicately to preserve the well-being of your household and survive until the declaration of ceasefire, set to occur at an intermediate time. To accomplish this, you must collect resources and prevent your house members' deaths at the hands of the enemy. This game greatly represents how the horrors of prolonged warfare affect citizens and their lives. The setting of this game wasn't made for you and it wants you to know it. You are an afterthought. You must adapt to a world in which you weren't taken into account. The horror of this game comes from the thought that this game is based on true events that have, can and most likely will happen again. I'm on a horse, motherfucker. Take a look at me. Pony Island is surprisingly a game about ponies. Michael won Sit Down Released in early 2016 by the independent Daniel Mullins, Pony Island is played from the first person perspective of an undefined character playing an arcade cabinet. While the game begins pretty cheerfully, it quickly changes directions completely, giving off the vibe of an unfinished, low quality 8-bit arcade game. This game's horror comes from the twist that it is entirely a game about ponies, as you the player learn that your soul has been stolen by the arcade cabinet you are playing. You are unable to stop playing or leave until you've either willfully given your soul to the devil himself or deleted the game's programming. This game is about as scary as it is good, which is to say not very. Receiving many poor reviews, this game falls short in the fact that while its premise is quite interesting, it doesn't quite deliver. While it is aesthetically pleasing and has its moments involving its gameplay, it isn't quite up to scratch. Also the whole pony thing takes away from the fear factor. So let's move on. What's up man? What's up? No fit? Uh, okay. The Cat Lady was developed by Harvester Games in late 2012. In this game, you are given control of a lonely, depressed, middle-aged lady whose companions consist of multiple stray cats. Now, as anyone in a situation would, Mary decides one day to kill herself. However, she is interrupted and has to return to this mortal plane to conduct the bidding of beings and not of this world. The story from this point onward gets quite complex, so let's just get into the basics. This game has some good twists, but also some good scares mainly stemming from the imagery in the game. Along with this, the mechanics of the game are limited due to the controls only consisting of WASD, giving the player a sense of claustrophobia, if that makes sense. While the terror of middle-aged women who own multiple cats does contribute a lot to this game, it also has an impressive amount of suspense. Overall, a good game with a great story, but it doesn't exactly push the medium of gameplay, like some other games mentioned. Hop into the roof or server, have a breakdown. Have a breakdown. In mid-2016, Welcome to the Game was released to praise by a wide audience. You, the player, are confined to a chair in front of your computer, where you will spend the majority of the game forced to wade through various sites on the deep web in order to uncover the link to access a website hosting a Red Room. Similar to the sequel to this game, released by the same studio just two years after, which is much more developed, allowing you to move around the better part of an entire hotel instead of being limited to your desk and the front door. In this game, you, a reporter, attempt to search 
search the deep web to locate the complete link to a site which will aid you in the investigation of a disappearance case. Both the first and second game use the basic gameplay mechanics of a hacking system, a web browser through which you locate parts of the links required to complete either game and exclusive to the second game, a system by which you can walk around your apartment building, whether to pick up packages, move your router to avoid detection by the police while staying anonymous and look around for intruders. Both these games are defined as horror due to two main factors. The first being the content you are exposed to as you search through the dark web. To uncover the codes necessary to progress, this includes hitmen, illicit substances, cult-like pages, gore site, and plenty of others which can be viewed as not strictly legal. The other being the opposition you face throughout the game, in the form of criminals, hitmen, the police, cult members, and serial killers. These games exemplify the horror genre in its combination of both slow tense build-up and an atmosphere, as well as being able to quickly transition to a much more fast-paced scenario and back. I've tried not to reveal much as I believe the most who clicked on this video will have played or seen these games, but if you haven't, make sure to check it out anyway. What the fuck, Richard? In the early 2010s, Higurashi When They Cry was released to an international audience. Taking place in the year 1983 in the Japanese village of Hinamizawa, you the player watch the events of the game unfold and attempt to piece together the storyline from the interactions of several of the game's main characters. This game has Five Nights of Freddy's levels of convoluted storyline, so I can't possibly go into every single aspect. The main plot point is that there are unexplained events occurring in the town. His appearances, maiming and gore are all prevalent in this game and feed into what cements this game into the horror genre. While this game is not for everyone, I strongly encourage those who want to play a horror game without actually playing a game to try this one out. Bravo 6, going dark. Spec Ops The Line is a third person shooter released in 2012, developed by Jaeger Development and published by 2K. Six months before the events of the game begin, there was a huge sandstorm in Dubai, leaving the entire city in ruins. The United Arab Emirates declared Dubai a no man's land and all travel to the city was barred. The rich fled, while the citizens were never evacuated. You play as Captain Martin Walker, who has been sent in after a radio signal has finally penetrated the storm wall. The radio message was left by Colonel John Conrad. Someone you fought alongside in Afghanistan. The message reads, This is Colonel John Conrad, United States Army. Attempted evacuation of Dubai ended in complete failure. Death toll, too many. The game begins mid-action, with you and your specialist team in a helicopter fight with several pursuing helicopters. Your opposition throughout this game are known as the 33rd. They are a large group of soldiers who are publicly disavowed for treason by the United Arab Emirates, and they are taking charge of what is left of Dubai. You decide to break orders and find Conrad. Throughout the game you're constantly chasing clues, but you're always just too late and find the person you're looking for executed. Walker starts to receive messages from Conrad throughout the game, telling him to do certain things things that go against his morality. For example, Conrad manipulates Walker into executing an Emirati soldier or a 33rd soldier who both committed serious crimes. Walker finally makes his way up the tallest building in the game to meet Conrad at his penthouse. Conrad appears to be the charismatic villainous force behind the atrocities that Walker was hoping for until Walker finds his decaying corpse on the penthouse deck. Walker finds that Conrad had committed suicide after his failed evacuation effort, and Walker had been communicating with Conrad through an hallucination after a previous white phosphorus strike earlier in the game. There are many endings to this game, and I'll leave them to you to find out. The game did initially have a sequel lined up, but was cancelled after the game became a commercial failure and didn't sell as much as Take-Two Interactive had hoped for. The game was also banned in the United Arab Emirates for its depiction of Dubai in a state of destruction. <laughs> Outlast Whistleblower, originally known as Outlast Story DLC, is a DLC for the first person survival horror game, Outlast, developed and published by Red Barrels. Despite just being a DLC, the studio often treats this product as a standalone game. Whistleblower starts off as a prequel to Outlast, revealing the reasons behind Mount Massive Asylum's outbreak, while simultaneously overlapping with the main story to reveal its conclusion from the previous cliffhanger. It was released in 2014. Same as the original Outlast, combat is impossible, and the player must either run or hide. The only item the player has access to is a camcorder, which is automatically acquired after the main character breaks out of his holding cell. The camcorder, however, is back battery operated and comes with a night vision function, which drains the battery faster. You start the game as Waylon Park, a software engineer working at Mount Massive Asylum. After you witness the torture going on in the asylum, you decide to send an email to Miles Upshur, reporting the corruption going on within the asylum. Shortly after sending the email, however, you're caught by your employer, and as punishment, you 
you are forced to endure the tests of the morphogenic engine. However, prisoners start breaking free, and you roam the facility as guards are trying to escape from the newly freed prisoners. Outlast and Outlast Whistleblower are incredibly popular games, so that's as far as I'm going to go. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust! Outlast 2 is a first person psychological survival horror video game and an indirect sequel to Outlast, developed and published by Red Barrels and distributed by Warner Bros. It was released in 2017. Outlast 2 takes place in the same universe as the original game, but features a different setting and new characters. This game was still built in Unreal Engine 3, but slightly modified. Players are now able to run, crouch and prone. There's also a stamina system, the movement system was reworked, and there's bandages to heal wounds. The camcorder makes a return but with a different HUD, and it can be used to record unfolding events within Temple Gate. All acquired recordings can be played back with the addition of Blake's commentary over them. And then it's the same system with the night vision draining Patrick faster. You play as Blake Langerman, a cameraman who is on a trip with his wife to southern Arizona to investigate the murder of Jane Doe. The woman was previously found eight months pregnant by the side of the road, before committing suicide in the hospital that she was brought to. Due to the region being accessible, you have to take a chopper to reach your destination, but it ends up crashing due to unknown complications. Blake wakes up sometime later with his wife nowhere in sight. Blake later realises that he's been stranded in a village with cult members that believe the end of time is upon them. His main goal is to find Lynn and escape alive from the hostile villagers. Blake starts having hallucinations of an event that happened at his old school with another girl. He discovers the church and finds a strange old man who has captured his wife. It is found out that they want to kill Lynn as her baby is the anarchist. Blake had no idea Lynn was even pregnant and she doesn't want to talk about it. They are saved by another group called the Heretics. During the game you are constantly on the run from the cult members, or trying to find out where you are and what's happened. Outlast 2 was a huge game on release, and full playthroughs were uploaded by the biggest YouTubers on the platform, so I'm more than sure you all know the story, so I will leave it there. I don't care that you broke your elbow. Released in 2014, Fingerbones is a horror game designed to be finished in a single sitting. It is a short psychological horror made to make you feel uneasy whilst thirsting for more. With no explanation as to who you're playing as, where you are and what your goal is, you simply start the game in a large mysterious room with glimpses of sunlight beaming through, often blinding you. From a first person perspective, you must navigate that room and find clues as to what is actually going on. Right from the start, there's an instant sense of eeriness and unwanted tension as the silence is sometimes interrupted with the apparent screams and cries of a young girl in the distance. In order to actually get out of the initial starting room, you must solve puzzles. Some are generally easy, whilst others will really have you thinking. This is how the game works. You solve puzzles to proceed through each room, getting you one step closer to the truth each time. Scattered around the game are numerous notes containing strange diary entries and opinions on humanity in general, often making you question very philosophical subjects and such. These notes also contain clues on how to solve certain parts of the game. For example, if you're a Require a password to unlock a door, it's very likely you can find the answer in one of the notes. Without spoiling too much, you'll eventually find out you're actually in a survival bunker, completely alone and isolated from the outside world. There's much more going on, but that's for you to find out by reading notes, which are actually very interesting, if not disturbing. What stands out the most about Finger Bones is that it's a first person horror game that doesn't rely on jump scares or cheap moves to scare you. The increasingly horrifying narrative will keep you well and truly spooked due to its sheer bizarreness. Oh fuck, I can't believe you've done this. In the far off year of 2020, Omori was published by Playism, a top-down RPG with you the player controlling a small group of children as you travel and fight your way through various dreamscapes, having the somewhat overcomplicated storyline spoon-fed to you. Playing this, it's easy to forget it's a horror game, with the dark themes being extremely subtle throughout, with interspersed cases of psychological horror. While games that don't appear like horror games are not uncommon, with such instances as Can Your Pet or the previously mentioned Doki Doki Literature Club, Omori simply handles most aspects that makes these type of games better than most. I'm in the ghetto. Da, 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 da. Silent Hill 2 is the second game in the Silent Hill survival horror series. It was released in September of 2001. You play as James Sunderland, who has recently arrived in the town of Silent Hill, after receiving a letter from his wife Mary, despite the fact that she had died from a chronic disease three years prior. The letter claims that Mary is waiting for James in their special place, which confuses James, as the whole town of Silent Hill was their special place. Despite James wondering if the letter is a prank by someone with a twisted sense of humour, he knows that the letter is definitively 
effectively written in Mary's handwriting, and the author is aware James once made a promise to return to Silent Hill with Mary, and that he never fulfilled this promise. Silent Hill 2 is probably one of the most popular games on this iceberg, so I am literally just going to leave it there. And with that, it draws a close to layer 3 of this iceberg. Before I pass you back to the doctor, I just want to give a quick thank you to NS and Lamp King for helping me with the research and scripting for this layer. I've been stacked up at work, but I didn't want to let it skip all you guys down. So again, thank you to those two. Be sure to go check out my channel and drop a sub, and with that, I'll let you continue with the video. I've been Bryson, peace. Lisa, the painful RPG is a post-apocalyptic role-playing video game developed and published by American Indie Studio, Dingaling Productions. The game was written, designed, and composed by Austin Jorgensen, and was released for Microsoft Windows and Linux on the 15th of December 2014. In Lisa, the player controls Brad Armstrong, a balding middle-aged man with a troubled past who journeys through a wasteland in search of Buddy, his adoptive daughter. Along the journey, he is forced to make choices that permanently affect both his own well-being and that of his party members. The game received mostly positive reviews, with praise for its darkly comedic writing and sound soundtrack. The Static Speaks My Name The Static Speaks My Name is an indie philosophical horror video game created by Jesse Barksdale. The game was released for Microsoft Windows and Linux. The game takes place in a first person perspective and starts out in the indistinct black space with a grey morphing blob. Walking up to it displays a text about a person named Jacob Ernholtz, who has committed suicide by hanging at the age of 31. The perspective then shifts to Ernholtz as he is waking up in his apartment. The player as Ernholtz must then perform a few menial tasks in the apartment, which is dimly lit with all the doors and windows ported up. Exploring the apartments reveal that Ernholtz has developed a session with painting of two palm trees and its painter Jason Malone, who a news article pinned to the refrigerator claims that he disappeared. The player could also find a hidden door behind a bookcase finding Malone in a cage. The player is then given an option to either unlock the cage or electrocute Malone. The player then must go to the final room and commit suicide by hanging. The perspective then shifts back to the black space with multiple gray blobs, each with another person's name and method of suicide. Synopsis for Kimi to Kanojo to Kanako no Koi. Holy fuck, I probably mispronounced that. That. So this is a Japanese game that apparently has to do with threesomes and drugs and shit. I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty with you guys. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I found a creepy pasta that talks about you know there's death and killing and that there's like sex in it and shit. Apparently this is a dark ass anime game. But that kind of changed into the iceberg of this, right? There's no more mainstream games, no more fun. This is gonna be a lot of anime torture porn games. And to be completely honest with you, I'm an American piece of shit, so I don't know what the hell is going on. So I could probably read out some creepy pastas and tell you what's going on, and I guess I'll do that with this game. Edit. It's been almost a year since I played it, so forgive me if I don't remember all the details. Feel free to correct me if I misremember anything. Basically, you play as a guy named Sinchi, who I don't even know what that means, who has a female childhood friend called Miyuki, who obviously kind of sort of has a crush on him. Sinchi then meets Owai, a pink haired hair- oh my fucking god, this is going to complete detail. Saya no Uta. I probably botched that as well. So this is an adult visual novel video game by Innocent Grey for Windows. It was released in Japan on July 4th, 2008, and for English speaking markets on June 29th, 2011. As a visual novel, the gameplay primarily revolves around reading dialogue with other characters and making choices that affect the outcome of the game. At certain points in the game, the player character Rajai, oh, dude, I'm, you guys are going to hate me for this one. I. I cannot read these Japanese names, I'm sorry. It's tasked with investigating crime scenes. During these investigation sequences, the player must examine these scenes to undercover evidence, in which Rajai <laughs> must find the best answer from the clues obtained during the game. However, it's possible to fail during these interference sequences by failing to obtain given pieces of evidence during a prior investigation. This in turn affects the outcome of the game. The game also features a travel system through which a player can traverse between different locations in Tokyo. Manhunt. All right, I'm a bullshitter. I said no more mainstream games. I guess that's going to be in a second. Manhunt is a 2003 stealth and survival horror game developed by Rockstar North and published by Rockstar Games, originally released for the PlayStation 2 in November 2003 and for Microsoft Windows and Xbox in April 2004. Manhunt was released through PlayStation Network for the PlayStation 3 in 2013 and PlayStation 4 in 2016, set within the fictional Carker City. Story follows J. Merle Cash, a death row prisoner who is forced to participate in a series of snuff films for disgraced film producer Lionel Starkweather, earning his freedom by murdering criminal gang members sent to hunt him on camera. The game received positive reviews from critics, with particular praise directed at its dark tone and violent nature, winning several accolades and gaining a substantial cult following. Though the game had a ton of video game controversy, and was banned in several countries, and was implicated in a murder by the UK media. Although this accusation was later rejected by the police and courts, Manhunt spawned the sequel, Manhunt 2 in 2007, with a new character and a new story. As of March 2008, the Manhunt series has collectively sold 1.7 million copies. Soundless. The small village cut off from the rest of the world, Fada, I, oh my, I'm sorry, spends its day slowly idling away by seeking with one another, eating with one another, 
Okay, so this is another game that has an anime theme to it, and I think it might be the same stuff as earlier. I try to look more about Soundless, and I just got a base description about it, which I'll put it here on screen, but I just don't, other than that, I don't know. I could read this to you, but I'm not that interested in the game, and I don't know what it's fully about. So I'll just move on to another thing that's more interesting, which is Corpse Party. Now, Corpse Party, everybody knows about Corpse Party, right? Corpse Party is a survival horror adventure video game which was originally created and developed by Team Gris Gris. The original version was released in 1996. It was followed by two remakes, Corpse Party Blood Covered, which was released for Microsoft Windows on December 9, 2006, and Corpse Party Blood Covered Repeated Fear, which was released for the PlayStation Portable on August 12, 2010, and iOS on February 9, 2012. The game was released in North America and Europe by Marvelous USA, under the title Corpse Party. Corpse Party in general is a game about murder and stuff. You can look more into it. There's an animated movie. Swan Song. Swan Song is a quest about the adventure life of an old wise man. His requested help is to get rid of a sea troll invasion. He views this quest as his swan song. That is his final adventure before retiring. Hatred. Hatred is a shoot 'em up video game developed and published by Destructive Creations, which was released on June 1st, 2015 on Microsoft Windows. The player is a mass killer who begins a genocide crusade to kill as many human beings as possible. The developer described Hatred as a reaction to video game aesthetic trends such as political correctness, politeness, vivid color, and games as art. Its announcement trailer was controversial by many video game journalists. The game was shortly removed by Valve from their Steam Greenlight service due to its extreme violent content, but was later brought back with a personal apology from Gabe Newell. It was green lit for a second time on December 29th, 2014 and released on June 1st, 2015. Upon release, Hatred received really bad reviews. Some critics panned the game to be repetitive and lackluster. I kind of agree though, Hatred is kind of a shit game, it's just nothing but shock value. PT. PT stands for Playable Teaser. PT is a first person psychological horror video game developed by Kojima Productions and was published by Konami. The game was directed and designed by Hideo Kojima in collaboration with film director Guillermo del Toro. Released for the PlayStation 4 on the 12th of August 2014, it's a free download on the PlayStation Station Network, PT served primarily as an interactive teaser for the game Silent Hills, a cancelled installment in the Silent Hill series, and eliminated the opportunity to reinstall the game. This has led to many fan remakes of the game. PT received critical acclaim for its direction, visual, story complexity, and a supernatural horror tension build, while its puzzles drew mixed responses. PT now is just a cancelled game that had more potential. This is probably on other icebergs actually, I think there's a cancelled game iceberg you could find this on. Postal. Postal is a top-down shooter game developed by Running With Scissors, and was published by Ripcord Games in 1997. A sequel to the game, Postal 2, was released in 2003. Postal is just a fun shoot game, probably seen in multiple memes, once again including Pyrocynical. Fun game. But that ends it for this layer. We're gonna go to the last layer. This is probably gonna be kind of quick. Starless. Starless is a stealth metroidvania game where you as a colonist make your way through the gloomy corridors of the space arc. Your main allies are caution and prudence. If the colonist dies, the next one will take his place. But the number of people on board is limited. Each death is a serious threat to the mission. That's pretty much all I have for the game. Freighter Knight. Yikes. Okay, I'll read the description for this game. As a victim of rape, Mio struggles to recover in the aftermath. Feeling isolated? So Freighter Knight is another one of the anime rape games, not that much to it. Euphoria. Euphoria is an 18 plus game by Clock Up. It was released in June 24th, 2011, which became... Uh, I'm gonna be so for real, some of these games I just don't really care that much about, and I just don't want to talk that much about them. I don't really know that much about them, and I don't really care, but I'll just read them off so you can do your own research. There's Dust Mania, which is a hentai game. Wonderful Everyday, which is a visual novel that was released for Microsoft Windows in 2010. There's Maggot Baits, which is also developed by Clock Up. There's Cage Open. Demon Phobia, which is a 2D survival horror game by a Korean developer. But that's pretty much it. With that being said, I'm going to conclude this iceberg. Like I said, I know this video is mostly just like random facts, but I hope you did the task that I asked to do in the beginning. This was shorter compared to others, but if you did enjoy it at all, or if you just liked my commentary of it, then please a subscribe would be nice. Also, Bryson's Lair was pretty good. He outshined this whole thing. So please check out Bryson. He definitely deserves your subs. With that being said, I have other projects in the future if you want to subscribe for me and stick around. Thanks. I'm Dr. Skipper, and see ya. I chain smoke, I choke. Have a good heart, but bad health.